What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to be reviewing the Fidelity app. Now, I use TD Ameritrade for all of my stock investments, and then I also use Gemini for buying any kind of cryptocurrencies, which is mainly Bitcoin. Uh, but I feel like it would be a good idea to review all these different trading platforms because there's a lot more than just TD Ameritrade or Robinhood. So in this video, I'm going to do Fidelity, and I got it up on my screen right here so you guys could look. Uh, I threw 20 bucks in it and you could just to show you what it looks like when there's money in it, how to buy a stock, what the layout looks like. Now one thing I'm really impressed with with Fidelity is it's taken on a very Robin Hood-esque kind of look. It's being super user friendly. It's not complex and clunky like it used to be or like other trading platforms are. And I feel like that's a huge thing that you want when you're on the phone. When you're on the computer, you want all those advanced graphs, charts, you name it, right? You want all the information on the computer because it's easier to see on a desktop that can be nice and big. But when it's on a little phone, you want it to be as easy as possible and you want the UI to be as easy as possible. I think Fidelity made a huge step in the right direction. This is what it looks like. So you can see I got my account value. I can look over one month, one year, or year to date. Again, I only threw $20 in it, so it's nothing special. But you can see below, we got our individual account. And then the one below that is a 401k. So I guess it sets up a 401k or a retirement account for you regardless. When I set this up, I purely want to set up a brokerage account. But now I have the option of both, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, but let's click on my individual account. So you can see it looks like this now. We got my account balance. I'm down two cents. Well, I guess, yeah, I'm down two cents from the $20 I invested in. Again, there's my account balance. Uh, we got performance and benchmark, unable to load for whatever reason. Uh, it shows your asset allocation and then portfolio news, whatever you're invested in, which I'm really not invested in much. But if we go over to positions, you can see what you are invested in. So I have Apple. I have $10 in cash, mainly so I could show you guys how to buy. And then I have the SPY. So we got an ETF in Apple, and the beauty about Fidelity is you can buy fractional shares. I threw $5 into both. Meanwhile, the SPY is about $437, and Apple is $145. So I think that's another great thing about Fidelity. You don't need to have a lot of money to start investing. That was kind of the huge push that Robinhood did. Here's free trading, and on top of that, you could throw a dollar in and call it a day with fractional shares. That's the same with Fidelity. You don't have a certain limit that you need with money. You could open up account, throw 100 bucks into it, and then invest in 10 different companies. Throw $10 into each company, and they could be companies like Google, which is, I don't know, like $2,800 as I'm recording this, or Amazon, which is over $3,000. It doesn't matter how big it is, you can just start throwing money into it and then watch your portfolio grow over time. But here we go, these are the balances. If we click on this, you can see we got total account value, which is that $19.98. If we drop down, it shows what's in cash and what's in securities. Nice little breakdown. Cash available to trade, so if you upload money or if you deposit money, it may take a day or two to clear. So I'll show you what is cleared. Settled cash, cleared cash, settled cash, same thing. All right, so now let's get on to the fun stuff, and that's how do you buy a stock on the app? So right now I'm in the individual account, I'm looking at the summary, and it's pretty simple. You can see down below the right-hand corner, right over, yeah, the right-hand corner, you can see the little house. Right next to it is a magnifying glass for search. You click on that, and then up top where it says find quote, we can type in any quote. So we're gonna do TGT, which is Target. We'll click on it, and then it'll bring up a quote for Target. And this is when you look at any stock, it'll look somewhat like this, but the information here is important, and it's, again, user-friendly, which I like. Very Robin Hood feel, one day, five days, one month, one year, and five years. They pretty much stole that from Robin Hood, but that's okay. Quote details, so you can see what the price is, all that fun information. Options chain, so you can buy options on Fidelity. We got news, we got profile, your dividends, social sentiment. So there's a whole bunch of good information here. And then right below is this nice big green buy button. So if you click on that, now 
I like how they're making it really simple, and again, they are copying a lot of stuff from Robin Hood, but that's okay because I know not that many people like Robin Hood anymore, so here's a nice uh, substitute where you can put all your money to. So up at the top where it says dollars, which is the top left-hand corner, if we click on that, you could see we could do dollars, which is a market order. We could do shares or a specific price, and that's a limit order. So what's important about that when you're buying a stock, if you don't know the difference between market order and limit order, you should definitely check out one of my videos on that. But if you have enough money, you typically want to do limit orders. That's how you can get the price exactly what you want. But if you're someone who's only throwing 100 bucks in and you wanna buy these stocks that are worth more than $100, beggars can't be choosers. You're gonna to have to go for dollars, which is gonna automatically resort to market orders. It's not the end of the world though because it's more important getting involved in the market than worrying about market orders and limit orders. So you can put in how much money you want. I have $10.22 in this account, so I want to invest $5 into Target. So I type that in. After you hit review, it'll pretty much sum up what you're doing. You're buying $5 worth of Target for whatever price. You're gonna get 0 0.01 or whatever the share price is going to be. And then as long as that all looks good, you hit enter and then it'll automatically buy that stock for you. That's what a market order does. It will, you could only buy, you can only do a market order uh, during the actual market, which is, at least in the United States, open from 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I know there are some other apps like Robinhood that will allow you to do a market order when the market's not open and then it'll just automatically fill in the morning. I actually don't like that because what happens if there is a huge spike? Overnight, a bunch of news happens, you have a plan, you wanna buy Target at whatever the current price is, and then next thing you know it, the price is 10 or $20 higher, that's not part of your plan, you're gonna get filled anyways. So I'm not the biggest fan of a market order overnight. It does suck, I understand it sucks if you want to do that, but I do like how Fidelity's kind of taking the right steps and making you not do a stupid play. I, I would consider that play to be stupid. You'd want to do it during the actual daytime if you're ever going to do a market order. Otherwise, you should always resort to limit orders. So again, if we go down to limit orders, you just click on that right there. And then a limit, even though I don't have enough money in the account, but I'll show you how you do it. If Target right now is $241.77, Say you don't want to buy Target for more than $240. You type in $240. Well, that'd be shares to buy. So you buy however many shares, one share, hit continue. Then you would set your price $240. So this is saying I want one share for $240. You hit continue. I don't have enough funds, but it'll show either today or 180 days. So 180 days, that's good to cancel. So what that means is say it doesn't fill, right? It doesn't go to 240. Instead, it goes up to 242. And the next day, 243. But a week later, it finally drops down to 240. Then you'll get filled. So know the difference between those two. If I hit review, it's probably not gonna work for me. Yep, because I don't have enough money in it. But again, it would be the same thing. You would review, you'd hit submit, and then you'd call it a day. So very simple to buy stock on Fidelity. Now, what about selling? So you bought a stock, you made some money, you wanna sell it, let's go to positions, let's click on Apple, and then right here, this shows you how much money I have in Apple, all of the stats below, I can get a current quote, I can buy more, so if I hit buy more, brings us back to the exact same screen, so you can choose between market order or limit order, and then if you wanna sell, right here you hit that sell button, and then you can say, hey, how much of Apple do I wanna sell? Same exact thing, limit order or market order, whether you're doing shares or dollars. So you can sell all of your shares, a portion of it, whatever it might be, but very, very easy to do. The only other things I haven't gone over, planning. So I guess planning, you can see we got assets and liabilities, view my spending, so you could manage your spending within the app. We go over to spending, here it is. It's a whole other thing to go into. I'm not gonna, hit get started with it because that would probably be another video for another time over here the little person just to show you the rest of the stuff i'm in the beta experience which makes it robin hood like if i turn that off it will go to classic experience and this is what it used to be like but to flip that beta on 
it's right here. So if you downloaded the app and you're in Classic, here's how you switch to beta. You just switch that and there we go, we're in the beta, which again, I like the beta better. I think it's, the UI is really good. The last button over here, we got that little dollar sign. We got trade, buy, deposit checks, pay bills, schedule transfers and investments. So this is how you're gonna be funding your account. So it's really simple. If you have a check, you just could deposit check. If you have bills to pay, you can do that. The one that you guys will probably be using the most, at least I do, is transfer. So you click on that, you choose the bank, select the amount. You could do just once or you could set it up if you don't want it to be just once. Maybe you want a reoccurring payment, which would be smart. And then uh, at the very end, you'd hit review and then you'd be good to go. There's link a bank account. I'm not gonna link a bank account right now just to keep the video nice and short, but this is pretty standard stuff. It's easy to enter that information in but now you know where it is within the app. That's the Fidelity app. I'm honestly very impressed with it. Before I downloaded it, I had no clue what it was like. After downloading it, I would probably rate it higher than Robinhood and a very close second to TD Ameritrade. Um, that's because I have a complete bias towards TD Ameritrade, so don't even listen to me on that front. Uh, but completely unbiased opinion on Fidelity. I think it's a great app to use. It's very easy. You could quickly learn how to navigate through it and then start investing in the stock market. And it is a very accredited company. So your money should be secure there. But before you even start investing, I'm not a financial advisor. Make sure you speak to a professional. Uh, anything on my channel is not advice. It's all education and entertainment purposes. But guys, if you liked this video, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Drop any comments below. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.